Please rise. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We welcome you this morning as we begin this sacred season of Lent. It might be nine or ten degrees outside, but we gather in this building around the warmth of a loving and merciful God who calls us to a season of renewal. And the ashes today that we receive represent that changing that's to begin in our lives and continue to happen in our lives really all the days of our life as we come from dust and return to dust. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, the campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, Return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegrooms quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
grace of your compassion wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Against you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, 
and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast... Anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I first started working in downtown Buffalo in 1996, we'll say, maybe 95 at the, at the close of it. But my first Lent, or first Ash Wednesday, was in 1996. And I'm working downtown, so I have to go to Mass downtown. And I went to the midday Mass at St. Michael's Church on Washington Street. Um, I remember my first year. And when I went there, it was a mob scene at 12 noon. And it was sort of like so busy that it was actually very hard to be part of it, the way the swarms of people that came in for it. And what I learned was I would start going at quarter to seven, the earlier Mass. So in subsequent years, I started going to the quarter to seven Mass at St. Michael's on Ash Wednesday when I was working downtown. But I worked for a law firm at the time, and then I would go back to my law firm, we're going to say around 7.30, quarter to eight. And then when I would begin, I, I found out very quickly I was the only person with ashes on. And it's hard to be the only person of a certain, whatever it may be. Um, it's not easy to stick out of a crowd, but I stuck out of a crowd, I'll tell you that, when I was at work. And then I would you often have a court appearance, maybe we'll say 9.30 in the morning in Erie County Hall. And when I went over to Erie County Hall, all of a sudden, there they are, the regular people that I would see in the you know, part of the community. And they had ashes on their foreheads, and I felt so much more part of them. But it's interesting, our, our first reading speaks of shout from the marketplaces. You know, put on ashes and, and let people know. But I can tell you, if you're all alone doing it, it can feel very uncomfortable, because I remember it very pointedly. But I knew that when Ash Wednesday came around, I would be there, and I would receive my ashes, and I would begin the, the Lenten journey. This year, we have a unique year. It's probably the only year in your life where ashes will be sprinkled on top of your head. And it's to remind us of that sackcloth and ashes and that, that time of change. But the beauty of it is it falls in line with our gospel of doing it secretly. Nobody will know that you receive these ashes today. You know, there are people that will post their photograph on Facebook and people will look at people's, you know, um, their, their, their cross on their forehead, stuff like that in other years. This is the one year you can't do that. Our gospel speaks of making sure that our, our relationship with our God is certainly something that we want to tell people about, but when it comes to that time of conversion, change inside. Change the inside of ourselves, whether whatever it may be, that as we change the inside, it glorifies on the outside. And it glorifies the greater glory of God and it brings in that kingdom of God. But this particular year, we do it in secret. We receive these ashes today in the midst of a pandemic. That The president spoke yesterday in one of those town squares and he said next year things should be back to normal. So I would envision that next Ash Wednesday, it'll be back to the sign of the cross on your forehead, marking you with ash, knowing that you come from dust, and you return to dust. And the other saying or the other verse that goes with it is from the Gospels. Repent and believe in the Gospel. When those ashes are placed upon our forehead or on top of our head, it's the signal to us that we will not live forever. We're only on this world or in this world for a period of time. 
and we will leave this world someday. But what God wants us to do is make a difference in this world. Make a difference in this world by the way we live. Make a difference in this world about the way we open our heart to him. Make a difference in the world about the way we change, about the way we increase our prayer life, by the way we remember others around us that it's not us alone with almsgiving, by the way we fast and fasting from so many different vices in our life to allow God to flourish in our lives and give us a new beginning. That's the beauty of the sacred season of Lent. Our first reading speaks of the normal way, where would you put a sign of the cross on someone's forehead? But in the midst of a pandemic, the safer option is to sprinkle. I was talking to someone last night about the best way to describe what a sprinkling would mean. Think about when you are making a soup or a recipe and you're asked to give a pinch of a certain herb or a pinch of a certain spice or a pinch of whatever you want to call it. But when it enters into the soup or that particular meal that you're making, it starts to change the flavor. It adds to the flavor. It brings out the best of the meal. That's what Ash Wednesday is designed to do. It's not about the amount of ash you receive or how ashes are received. It's about how that sprinkling, how that pinch can make a difference in your life and everyone that when it's at home, when you share your meal with, but when it comes to ashes, who we share our life with. We create the body of Christ by the way we live our life. So I challenge you, which I challenge every year, think about what you want to do for this Lent today. Whatever it may be, something you want to give up, something you want to fast from, some way you want to order your prayer life, some way you want to help yourself realize that there's more in the world than you when it comes to almsgiving. That's its purpose of that but to make this particular Lent extra special. I said on Sunday that it is a very special year because most things that right now are closed. Most restaurants are not working or they're not working at good capacity. Um, there's a lot of things that people are not gathering in groups right now for safe measure. I think the mass and the social distancing naturally create a divide, but it gives us a unique time on this life to let God in. Let him into your life. Let the beauty of creation into your life and make that change. Lent will slip through our fingers just like that pinch of ashes will slip through the, the hands of the Eucharistic minister or me unless we allow this time to make that change. So before you go to bed tonight, think about what you want to do. What you want to do to grow your prayer life to grow your fasting from various vices of life and, you know, bring in the glory of God into your life. But allow that little pinch, that little seasoning that we add on to recipes and put into soups and various recipes that we make at home, to let that pinch be our Lord. And just imagine how incredible the world will be if we use these 40 days to make a change. It all begins today with us. And it also begins today in secret. May we do all things, opening up our hearts, and do it for God's glory, because we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You can remain seated. We will bless our ashes. If you have a missalette, it's found on page 74 if you'd like to follow along. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out your grace of your blessing on these your servants who are marked with these ashes, that they may follow the Lenten observances, that they may be found worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And I bless these ashes in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I practiced last night to make sure it would make it over. You can stay where you are. We're going to do it just like communion. But I ask, I invite our three Eucharistic ministers to, to come forward to help me. And um, I need someone to give ashes to me as well. There are two verses that you'll hear as we go around the pews. I'm going to do them globally. But I think it's also good for them to be done individually over everyone's forehead. The first is, remember you are dust. And into dust you shall return. Meaning, this is the time to change. To use these 40 days to make that change. The other one is repent and believe in the gospel. We will hear on Sunday about changing our ways as we enter into the first Sunday of Lent. That's what this means. Repent of whatever is going on in our life. Believe in the gospel and anchor in. So I invite our our, uh, Eucharistic ministers to come forward.
Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters. Trusting in the Lord's mercy, let us bring before him our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for the world. For the church throughout the world, for you and I, which are the church, may the Lord lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving this Lent and also all the days of our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, for ways in which we govern in our own families and relationships, may the Spirit guide our decision-making for the common good of our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children throughout the world, especially those who are in need of food, shelter, and care, may the Lord protect and guard them, we pray to the Lord. For all members of this faith community of St. John the 23rd, may the Lord help us to persevere in our Lenten commitments in the face of distractions, in temptations, we pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, today we remember in a special way Helen Schneller. May Helen and all the faithful departed, may the Lord's perpetual light shine upon her and them and bring them everlasting joy, we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We make these prayers to the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please be seated. And there's actually no collection on Ash Wednesday. There's no collection on Ash Wednesday. Oh, you know what? Wait a second. Wait a second. There is a collection on Ash Wednesday. It's Thanksgiving. I apologize. That's my mistake. That is my mistake. I thought to myself, because it's Wednesday. But there is. Sorry about that. It must be because it's only like nine degrees out. Right? Blessed are you. The Lord, I'm um, sorry, I'm off. Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Our Lenten prayer of reconciliation, if you'd like to follow on in the Missalah, begins on page 23. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, 
on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. There's meditation books at the doors. If you'd like to take one home with you, use this Lent as a way of just growing in your faith and renewing. Just like that little spice adds to a recipe, may these ashes add to that Lenten observance of yours and and may it be a, a source of renewal in your life and in the lives around you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, and on those who bow before your majesty, and by your mercy may they merit the reward you promise to those who do penance through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.